Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really satisfying motion graphic loop in Blender 4.0. And I don't know why I came up with it. And I don't know why it's so satisfying. I find it satisfying, some people may not, but I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do this. This one over here, this is my original, but the one we're gonna be making today is almost exactly the same, but I will be uploading my original that you see here to Patreon. That's all in the description below. So let's jump in and make this satisfying little loop in Blender. So with a new scene opened up in Blender, let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. And we're just gonna go into our front orthographic view and let's grab the bottom half of our cube and go G, Z and move it up like so. And let's just go to our modifiers, add modifier and let's type in M, I, R. Let's give this a mirror modifier and turn off the X and enable the Z. Enable clipping and then go G, Z and just move this down till it snaps together. Then go X and delete the face. And so now we have a mirrored cube. We're just gonna select this top face and go, um, let's just go P and separate by selection. So P separate, tab back out. And now let's just go in, now that we're in object mode, let's just grab this original, tab back in. Let's just press A to select everything. And let's go E to extrude, right click. And let's go Alt S with it still active and just scale out slightly along the normals like so. So this is gonna be essentially the thickness of your box. So I'm gonna go about this much. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna tab back out and let's select the duplication that we created. Go back into edit mode, A to select all of it, S to scale it a little bit, and then E to extrude and Z, and let's extrude it up about this much, like that. Okay, that's really cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to tab back out um, let's now go shift A, let's go to our mesh options, add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder active, let's just go S.2 and hit enter. And then we're gonna go G in our front view and just move it up here somewhere. Then we're gonna go to add modifier and go search and type in array and get an array modifier. And let's make the factor here 1.5 on the X. And let's just make this a value of four. And now if this is looking too big or wider than the cube, just go S to scale it down. And I think this is good. Something like this should be fine. We just want it so it um, can fit within the space here of the top face here, this top lid essentially. And then all we have to do is go and duplicate this modifier. And this time we're gonna go on the Y and make it 1.5 and then make the factor on the X zero like so. So now we have this four by four grid and we're gonna go G, Y in our top orthographic view and just move it in like so. So just roughly I it's as long as it isn't touching the sides anywhere over here or at the front, it should be fine. And then we're gonna go into our front view. Let's just quickly go into wireframe and go G, Z and move it down until it's kind of sticking through all the way through this top lid like so. Now let's come here and apply these modifiers. And then let's grab this lid, add modifier search, and let's type in Boolean, get a Boolean modifier. Click on an eyedropper and then select this stack over here. And let's just go ahead and drag it up above the mirror. And now you can see it's cutting into this. I'm gonna come here to the Boolean dropdown and apply it. And then let's just select these guys and press delete. And now we have this. So let's select this lid, right click and go shade auto smooth. And let's just, um, yeah, let's just grab this guy, tab into edit mode. And in fact, let's just tab out and let's just apply that mirror and then tab back in. And we're just gonna select these two faces in the middle here, like so. Control B to create a bevel, drag it all the way up like so. There you go. And then we're just gonna tab back out. Let's just go add modifier search and type in bevel, get a bevel modifier. And then let's just bring this bevel amount down and bump up the segment count. And now let's right click and go shade smooth. Okay, so now we've modeled this component, right? So now it's the fun bit. So let's go shift A, let's add in a UV sphere. And it's really important that we go M and go new collection. Let's just call it spheres and go okay. And now we can go S to scale it down and we're gonna go G and move it up. And inside of wireframe, we want the sphere to be just big enough to fit in this hole over here. 
So if it helps, you can go to your top orthographic view and then move it um, maybe forward in the top orthographic view. Just have it so it's just fitting inside of one of these holes like that. Okay, then you're gonna go Control A and apply that scale, really important or Command A if you're using a Mac and then right click and go Shade Smooth. And now we need to go ahead and also go to our materials quickly. Let's just give it a placeholder material before we duplicate. And we'll just call it Balls. And now let's go G, Z and move it down to about here. And let's go Shift D to duplicate and let's go X and move it over just slightly. And let's go Shift R to duplicate that. And we should get about five in here like that. Okay, about five of these spheres. And now let's just grab our box here and press H to hide it. And just grab these spheres at the front. In our front view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and Z and just move it up till it's slightly above the bottom row. And then go Shift R to repeat that action until we have about four or five going up like so. And then go to your right view grab all these guys and go Shift D and Y and move them slightly out like so. And then go Shift R to repeat that action so you get at least about four or five going this way. Just like that. Awesome, now let's go Alt H to bring back this guy over here. And now what we have here is the sphere. So we can always come and turn these off or turn off the other guys over here in the main collection. So for now, let's just turn off the other ones. So we just have these spheres. And we're just gonna press eight, select all of them and holding and shift, select one of them. And then we're gonna go over to our physics. We're gonna go rigid body and let's make, leave it as active. We're gonna go here to shape and make it sphere. And now if we go F3, we can type in copy from and go copy from active. And now all of these are gonna share that same property with the active one that we added this to. So now let's turn this off and bring back the main collection. And let's go Shift A and go to Empty Options, add in a cube, scale it a little bit, and then let's select these parts over here. Holding and Shift, select the empty and go Control P and go Object, Keep Transform. And then we're gonna grab this, go to the modifiers, apply any modifiers on these, so that's gonna be the mirror. I'm gonna grab this white guy and apply the bevel. So they're both applied. And we should be able to grab this empty now and move it, as you can see over here. And before we add physics properties to this, let's animate here quickly. So we're gonna to come to our timeline. Let's make it 150 frames. And let's come to frame 10. And in frame 10, we're gonna go I and insert a rotation keyframe. Then we're gonna grab that keyframe, go Shift D to duplicate it and take it all the way to 150. And now we're gonna enable auto keying and we're gonna come up to frame 42. And we're gonna go R to rotate it like so. And then we're gonna go R X and rotate it like so. And because we have auto keying enabled, we don't have to hit I, it's automatically added that in. And now let's go up to frame 102. And let's go R and rotate it this way. And go R double Z and rotate it on its local Z axis about this much. So something like that, there you go. And now let's just come here to frame 42, grab that shift D to duplicate and give it a bit of a hold. Grab this one over here, Shift D to duplicate and give it a bit of a hold. And turn off auto keying. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see something like this, okay? Looking pretty cool. And you can always come here anytime you want and alter the animation a little bit if you want. But this is just more or less kind of just an idea for you of how you could do something like this. Okay, pretty cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these guys. We're gonna to go to our physics. Rigid body, let's make it passive. Make sure to enable animate it. And then change the shape to mesh. Then let's grab the other bit here, holding and shift select this guy. The um, shell that we just gave that property to and let's go F3. And then once again, just type in copy from and to go copy from active. Now let's bring back our spheres. Let's go to frame one. Let's make sure to save and let's go hit our space bar. And now we can see these guys kind of animating like this. How cool is that? And honestly, um, this bit here we animated, you can do whatever you want. So I've just kind of randomized it a little bit. But now that we have that done, let's go over to our physics um, scene properties. Let's go to the rigid body world. 
Let's go to the cache and make it 150 frames. Let's go ahead and bake this simulation. And now it is baked. So now we can go Shift A, we can add in a plane. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, the way I did it was just to create kind of like a stretched out plane and then in edit mode, I kind of came here and just extruded it out a little bit like so. And then a little bit like so and then up like that. And then in the front view, I just added in a camera by going Shift A, adding in a camera in the front view, then moving it back. And I think I changed the focal length to something like 95. And I kind of just moved it back just a little bit, something like this. And then I went into cycles under the renderer and I set the max sample to something like 55. And now if you go Z, you can see this is what we have. So now you can go Shift A, you can add in a area light rotate it slightly and let's give it a strength of 500 and then bring up that size. Maybe let's go with a strength of 1,200 actually. Yeah, there we go. And then in our top view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it, rotate it in like so. And then one more duplication coming from the front. So we have kind of like a three point lighting setup. And now we can grab our glass shell here. We can go to our materials and let's just go to the transmission, give it a weight of one and bring down that roughness. So we have this kind of glass material. And we also wanna grab the shell here and um, or kind of like the outer thing here and just give, get rid of the default material that we just added to this because this was the default cubes so that had this material already, which we'll just call glass by the way. This one here, um, you can go ahead and get your own material. I already have a free material that I got from Polyhaven. So you can just go to the internet, type in poly, type in Polyhaven and just go to their website. So it's easy to find and they have a texture section. And over here, you can download any of these textures you want. You're gonna download them as a zip file. So once you download it, you can just extract it. And then inside of Blender, you can simply just go file append and you can find that extracted blend file. So I already have a collection of them somewhere. So I'm gonna just get a plywood one that I really like. And I'm just gonna go ahead and append the material. And then I'm gonna give it to that. But you guys can use whatever material you want. Like I said, Polyhaven is a great place to find a lot of free materials already set up for Blender. All you have to do is download, extract them and append them into, the, into Blender. So I've now added that plywood. And I kind of really like the way that works with this. And because in our first, when we were duplicating the spheres, remember we created them? And we added a default material before duplicating. So we can just go ahead and give them a metallic, make them a little bit darker in the value and make them kind of like a bit of a slight gold. And let's go Z and go rendered. And now we can see that's what we have. Let's bring down that roughness just a little bit. And I think that works really cool. And now we can also grab our background, just go new and kind of make it a really dark kind of color. And let's go to our render options here and just give this some motion blur, like so. Okay, so now this is looking really good. And if you wanted to, you could grab this shell. You can go over to your shading um, window here. You can go into rendered view and you can simply go ahead here and Shift D to duplicate this shader here. Then go Shift A search and let's get a mix shader. Place it on this cable and then mix these two together. But this one over here, we're gonna take the transmission all the way down and we're gonna make it kind of like a bit of a blue color. And now we've got a slider here. So we can go between having glass and between having this shader over here. So all we have to do is drag up a little extra window over here by coming down here, just dragging up. Let's make this our timeline and we're gonna to come to frame 10. And on frame 10, we're gonna give this a value of one and over it, hovering over it, we're gonna press I to insert a keyframe. Then we're gonna go up to frame 14 or maybe even 16. Drag it down to zero and then press I to insert a keyframe. And let's go all the way up to frame 130 and press I again. And then come over to frame 150 and then drag it all the way up to one and press I again to insert a keyframe. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, it kind of changes from being um, opaque or, or not see-through to um, being like completely transparent. 
And that's it. So now you can definitely um, add, you know, like mess around with your lighting and make it look as nice as you want. You can also go ahead with your camera, add depth of field and with your little eyedropper here, select the empty as a reference then bring down the f-stop to something like 0.7 or maybe even 0.4. So now you get that nice soft background. But yeah, let's go ahead quickly and go render and render images to give this a quick test render. And there we have it looking pretty nice. So you can now render this out as an animation by going to your output, selecting a destination like your desktop, for example. And then you can change your file format to FFmpeg video. And under your encoder, you can choose something like MP4. And then you can go render and you can render this out as an animation to your selected destination. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this fun little um, motion graph, satisfying motion graphics loop in Blender 4.0. I will be uploading my original one here to Patreon. Um, this is the exact same one. Like I said, I just spent a little bit more time with the lighting and the materials, but it's the exact same thing. I haven't hidden anything from you guys. It's really the exact same animation and simulation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time for another one.